A comprehensive school is a school type, principally in the United Kingdom, it is a school for secondary aged children, that does not select its intake on the basis of academic achievement or aptitude, in contrast to the selective school system, where admission is restricted on the basis of selection criteria. The term is commonly used in relation to England and Wales, where comprehensive schools were introduced as state schools on an experimental basis in the 1940s and became more widespread from 1965. With the educational reforms of the 2000 and 2011 decades, they may be part of a local education authority or be a self-governing academy or part of a multi-academy trust. About 90% of British secondary school pupils now attend comprehensive schools as opposed to independent schools or the small number of grammar schools. They correspond broadly to the public high school in the United States and Canada and to the Gesamtschule in Germany. Topic: <laughs> Context Comprehensive schools provide an entitlement curriculum to all children, without selection whether due to financial considerations or attainment. A consequence of that is a wider ranging curriculum, including practical subjects such as design and technology and vocational learning, which were less common or non-existent in grammar schools. Providing post-16 education cost-effectively becomes more challenging for smaller comprehensive schools, because of the number of courses needed to cover a broader curriculum with comparatively fewer students. This is why schools have tended to get larger and also why many local authorities have organized secondary education into 11 to 16 schools, with the post-16 provision provided by sixth form colleges and further education colleges. Comprehensive schools do not select their intake on the basis of academic achievement or aptitude, but there are demographic reasons why the attainment profiles of different schools vary considerably. In addition, government initiatives such as the City Technology Colleges and Specialist Schools programs have made the comprehensive ideal less certain. In these schools children could be selected on the basis of curriculum aptitude related to the school's specialism even though the schools do take quotas from each quartile of the attainment range to ensure they were not selective by attainment. A problem with this is whether the quotas should be taken from a normal distribution or from the specific distribution of attainment in the immediate catchment area. In the selective school system, which survives in several parts of the United Kingdom, admission is dependent on selection criteria, most commonly a cognitive test or tests. Although comprehensive schools were introduced to England and Wales in 1965, there are 164 selective grammar schools that are still in operation, though this is a small number compared to approximately 3,500 state secondary schools in England. Most comprehensives are secondary schools for children between the ages of 11 to 16, but in a few areas there are comprehensive middle schools, and in some places the secondary level is divided into two, for students aged 11 to 14 and those aged 14 to 18, roughly corresponding to the U.S. middle school or junior high school and high school, respectively. With the advent of key stages in the national curriculum some local authorities reverted from the middle school system to 11–16 and 11–18 schools so that the transition between schools corresponds to the end of one key stage and the start of another. In principle, comprehensive schools were conceived as neighborhood schools for all students in a specified catchment area. History <inaudible> <inaudible> England and Wales The first comprehensives were set up after the Second World War. 
In 1946, for example, Walworth School was one of five experimental comprehensive schools set up by the London County Council. Another early comprehensive school was Holyhead County School in Anglesey in 1949. Coventry opened two comprehensive school in 1954 by combining grammar schools and secondary modern schools. These were Caledon Castle and Woodlands. Another early example was Tividale Comprehensive School in Tipton. The first, purpose-built comprehensive in the north of England was Colne Valley High School near Huddersfield in 1956. The largest expansion of comprehensive schools resulted from a policy decision taken in 1965 by Anthony Crossland, Secretary of State for Education in the 1964–1970 Labour government. The policy decision was implemented by Circular 1065, an instruction to local education authorities to plan for conversion. Students sat the 11 plus examination in their last year of primary education and were sent to one of a secondary modern, secondary technical, or grammar school depending on their perceived ability. Secondary technical schools were never widely implemented, and for 20 years there was a virtual bipartite system which saw fierce competition for the available grammar school places, which varied between 15% and 25% of total secondary places, depending on location. In 1970, Margaret Thatcher, the Secretary of State for Education in the new Conservative government, ended the compulsion on local authorities to convert, however, many local authorities authorities were so far down the path that it would have been prohibitively expensive to attempt to reverse the process, and more comprehensive schools were established under Thatcher than any other education secretary. By 1975 the majority of local authorities in England and Wales had abandoned the 11-plus examination and moved to a comprehensive system. Over that 10-year period many secondary modern schools and grammar schools were amalgamated to form large neighborhood comprehensives, whilst a number of new schools were built to accommodate a growing school population. By the mid-1970s the system had been almost fully implemented, with virtually no secondary modern schools remaining. Many grammar schools were either closed or changed to comprehensive status. Some local authorities, including Sandwell and Dudley in the West Midlands, changed all of its state secondary schools to comprehensive schools during the 1970s. In 1976 the future Labour Prime Minister James Callaghan launched what became known as the «Great Debate» on the education system. He went on to list the areas he felt needed closest scrutiny, the case for a core curriculum, the validity and use of informal teaching methods, the role of school inspection and the future of the examination system. Comprehensive school remains the most common type of state secondary school in England, and the only type in Wales. They account for around 90% of pupils, or 64% if one does not count schools with low-level selection. This figure varies by region. Since the 1988 Education Reform Act, parents have a right to choose which school their child should go to or whether to not send them to school at all and to home educate them instead. The concept of «school choice» introduces the idea of competition between state schools, a fundamental change to the original «neighborhood comprehensive» model, and is partly intended as a means by which schools that are perceived to be inferior are forced either to improve or, if hardly anyone wants to go there, to close down. Government policy is currently promoting specialization whereby parents choose a secondary school appropriate for their child's interests and skills. Most initiatives focus on parental choice and information, implementing a pseudo-market incentive to encourage better schools. This logic has underpinned the controversial league tables of school performance. Scotland Scotland has a very different educational system from England and Wales, though also based on comprehensive education. It has different ages of transfer, different examinations and a different philosophy of choice and provision. 
All publicly funded primary and secondary schools are comprehensive. The Scottish Government has rejected plans for specialist schools as of 2005. Northern Ireland Education in Northern Ireland differs slightly from systems used elsewhere in the United Kingdom, but it is more similar to that used in England and Wales than it is to Scotland. Australia When the first comprehensive schools appeared in the 1950s, the Australian government started to transition to comprehensive schooling which has been expanding and improving ever since. Prior to the transition into comprehensive schooling systems, primary and secondary state schools regularly measured students' academic merit based on their performance in public examinations. The state of Western Australia was the first to replace many multilateral school systems, proceeding with Queensland, and finally South Australia and Victoria. The Australian education system is organised through three compulsory school types. Students commence their education in primary school, which runs for seven or eight years, starting at kindergarten through to year six or seven. The next is secondary school which runs for three or four years, from year 7 or 8 to year 10. Finally, senior secondary school which runs for two years, completing years 11 and 12. Each school tier follows a comprehensive curriculum that is categorized into sequences for each year level. The year level follows specific sequence content and achievement for each subject, which can be interrelated through cross-curricular. In order for students to complete and graduate each tier level of schooling, they need to complete the subject sequences of content and achievement. Once students have completed year 12, they may choose to enter into tertiary education. The two-tier tertiary education system in Australia includes both higher education i.e., university, college, other institutions and vocational education and training Higher education works off of the Australian Qualifications Framework and prepares Australians for an academic route that may take them into the theoretical and philosophical lenses of their career options. <laughs> 